Hello, so today we are going to be talking about the discovery of America. Um, but before that, I want us to do a little exercise, and I want you to think about your first day of class. Um, by first day of class, I want you to think about your experiences, like your first, what your first class was. Did you meet any new people? Did you have any new uh, experiences? Were there any changes that you noticed? Um, even what did you have for lunch? To even did you have a good day, or were you just right back to the grind for school? Um, now I just want you to take a few minutes to just think about what your experience on your first day of class was, and then after you have some good idea, I want you to share your experience with the partner to the left of you, and then talk about that for another couple minutes, and then get back to me. Now, after talking to your classmates and describing your first day and your experiences there, um, like I would have thought that your experiences were not the same. Everybody's got a different perspective, even if it's the same day, at the same school, at the same season, the same weather. Everyone has a different experience with an event, and that kind of brings us to a, an overarching theme that's going to be in my class, and it is that perspectives matter. Nobody has the same perspective on a historical event. There's always two multiple sides to a story, and that's what we're going to explore today with the discovery of America, or just the New World in general. Um, so that brings us to the topic of Christopher Columbus. Who here knows or is familiar with Christopher Columbus. Um, get, as a show of hands, raise your hand if you are, if you do know who Christopher Columbus is. Okay. Um, from that, who knows why he is famous? Um, you could say he's a Catholic icon. He is a explorer. He was the one who discovered America. He um, was just an iconic figure in American history. Um, but who actually was Christopher Columbus? What did he do? What was his legacy? Uh, Christopher Columbus was an Italian explorer. He went to, um, he had an idea for how to save, how to save, to be more efficient on the spice trade, um, which was everything back then. Um, so he went to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain to charter a ship, three ships and a crew, three ships and a crew to go and sail to the New World because he had an idea that was different than the current uh, other explorers at the time. So for example, uh, or, so the New World, the, Europe was having a problem. Europe wanted spices. The demand for spices was incredible. It was a symbol of power. It was wealth. It was a major factor in the economy during this time period. However, their problem was that the only way to get to India and South Asia to get these spices was either across Africa through the Cape of New, uh, Good Hope, which was very dangerous and had a high chance for shipwrecks, which, be, which would cause financial devastation to the ships and the countries that sent the voyages. And the other, the major, the most commonly um, traveled path was called the Silk Road. The Silk Road went from Europe through the Middle East, through West Asia, to India and the other Asian areas um, to collect the spices. However, those areas were ha inhabited. They were heavily taxed and they were dangerous. It, since people knew such precious cargo went by these uh, on the Silk Road, it was uh, liable to get attacked, raided, goods were stolen, men were, people were killed. Um, and overall, it wasn't... Uh, the most efficient way for people to get these spices, but it was the most common because of the land travel. Um, but Christopher Columbus had an idea. He thought of sailing past the Atlantic Ocean towards India. So as you can see on this map that I have, this was Christopher Columbus's plan to sail straight from Spain around and then hit India through what is now what is it Indonesia and then land in India to collect spices um, but as you can see in this next map and as we know as we are here in America today that uh, he hit a roadblock and that roadblock was the North and South America uh, or to him the New World the New World um, was not what he expected but it became the foundation for his legacy so after Columbus received sponsorship from King 
uh, Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. He set off his journey to what he thought would be India. Um, at, but, so he took three ships. He took the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria over to him. And where he ended up was uh, Hispaniola, which is present-day Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Uh, but what he found there, he did not find India. He did not find the spices. He did not find any of the plans that he had made. But he found uh, the, popula the population of the Taino people. Taino people were numerous. They had a population of upwards in, se in several millions. These people had a very prosperous society, a very rich culture, and they were known, even by Columbus himself, for their civility and their welcomingness to these foreign uh, outside explorers. Um, and this leads us to an important uh, debate. Can you discover something that's already been inhabited by people that, even on Western standards, were civilized, had culture, had societies, had uh, gender roles that were more prominent at the time in Western society. Um, and that's why it's important to see that to Columbus, he, he discovered a new world and a new society. However, to the Taino people, he was a invader or he was a explorer and who came to their homeland. Um, and that is why it's so important to see how the Taino people responded to Columbus. Um, and furthermore, what Columbus did to the Taino people as a result of this new uh, exploration and the new colony that the Spanish set up in um, Hispaniola had detrimental effects to the Taino people. So, um, the Taino people, as a result of Columbus's expansion, were off were deeply hurt by the Spaniards who were merciless in enslaving the Taino people. They would assault and murder the vulnerable who were not accessible for the profits that the Spanish saw and the profit that they did is they saw the people there and they moved them into the slave trade to work in sugar plantations and different and in other colonies and the major killer of the Taino people beyond the cruelty of the Spanish was that was the disease that the um, indigenous people had no natural um, immune systems for. And as a result, the population of the Taino people dropped nearly entirely. Uh, the record is not exactly, there's, there's uh, several variants of what the number is, but these people were essentially wiped off the map in this region. Um, and that's leads to the point of if to the point of perspectives I want everybody to fill out a Venn diagram and to show on the worksheet that will show how the differences between the um, Spanishes the, the Spaniards and Christopher Columbus's perspective was and what their goals were what their motivations what they did in finding the new world and also from what perspective did the Taino people see that these new explorers and Europeans and also invaders had an impact on them now take a few minutes and fill out this um, worksheet and then we'll discuss it briefly as a class um, now to close this class I want everybody to um, Whip out your weekly journals and write down this question. Um, it's like other week, like other weekly journals. This question is to answer this. You, it's going to be four to five sentences in high quality, detailed answers. So I want each question to have to each point that you make to be backed up with evidence that you can support. And um, 
for this question, I want you to compare the effects of um, Christopher Columbus's discovery or the European discovery of the New World on the Taino people and on Europe um, at, and the European and how that shaped the beginnings of the Columbia Exchange and how that affect the decline in indigenous populations in the New World. For this uh, weekly journal you're going to complete, you are more than welcome to use the Venn diagrams that you filled out and put brief bullets in to help formulate the ideas that you're going to then put into your um, reflection uh, journal entry. And that should be able to help you um, create a nice solid argument for why the perspectives on each side of the Taino people and the Spaniards.